Uh, I touched on this in the very beginning of how ketamine is used or is considered one of the most essential medications or you know, top 50 medi essential medications by the World Health Organization. Any healthcare system has to have this as part of their emergency toolkit. And here's why. Um, uh, you, you, you don't see some of the, the side effects that we normally see with anesthetics. So, for example, um, it does not decrease the cardiovascular system. It actually stimulates the cardiovascular system. Uh, with a, with uh, inhibiting reuptake of norepinephrine and catecholamine. So your heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiac output are actually increased, not decreased. It's important on the battlefield, right? Um, uh, because if you have blood loss and you have shock and, and et cetera, uh, the last thing you want to do is drop the blood pressure or drop the volume even more. Pulmonary, it actually stimulates the beta-2 adrenergic receptor, so you don't see respiratory depression. Um, in, fa in fact, you will see uh, you'll see respirations preserved. Of course, this is at therapeutic doses, not, not you know, comatose doses. Um, and it smooths out uh, uh, smooth muscles. So bronchodilation occurs, uh, which is important, especially in patients who might have bronchial uh, reactive airways. Neurologically, it increases cerebral blood flow, metabolism, and potentially ICP. So you do have to use care if patients have an increased ICP. Um, seizure threshold is unaltered. So this was one of the sort of myths, if you will, or, or just maybe some data that was maybe a little, you know, not true or false in the past. Um, uh, you know, ketamine was, in the past, they said, hey, listen, ketamine causes seizures. And if you look at newer data, it's actually the opposite. It, it, we, we don't see it causing seizures. Again, this is at therapeutic doses, okay? If you're, if you're using it in irresponsible ways, I mean, all bets are off. And we've seen in our practice, we've had patients who end up getting seizures because of pain. And we've actually seen that when we reduce the pain, if the pain is centrally mediated, the seizures disappear. So kind of a really cool effect. So we, you know, of course, when we first got our first patients who had a history of seizures, you, you know, everyone's kind of nervous because we're like, well, you know, some of the old literature says this, but, you know, Mechanistically, it doesn't make any sense, et cetera, et cetera. But I can tell you, after you know, treating many, many patients um, uh, who have central sensitization and seizures, uh, as a result of that central sensitization, the seizures actually go away if you cure the underlying problem or treat the underlying problem. And finally, causes sensory and, per and uh, perceptual illusions, vivid dreams, and emergence reactions. So this is what ketamine is kind of known for, right? That hallucinatory drug. And, uh, and, and it can. It can. Even at therapeutic doses, it can. Um, and that's where maintenance of that therapeutic dose and management of the therapeutic dose is really important. If you do it at the right level, you sort of get that dissociation without all the wicked side effects. Um, we almost never see any wicked side effects or these, these crazy hallucinations, all that stuff. We don't really see that at all. Um, we see dissociation, but not that. So it's a fine line, right? It's a, I call it the sweet spot. Trying to just be at that sweet spot or, or right at that you know, tightrope, right? Not too much, not too little, and getting that therapeutic response. And then you end up seeing you know, minimal side effects, but, but maximal efficacy. So ketamine perioperatively, I did touch on this before, but again, multiple studies have been done, um, especially recently, but also all the way back uh, you know, 15 years ago even and more, showing that when ketamine is used, our post-operative pain and our post-operative uh, medication requirements are lower. And that's just looking at this you know, really in a short sort of span. Looking at it long term, I mean, data that we have not published, but data that we have, when we look at it long term, we actually see chronic pain in general going down. We see medication usage in general going down. In fact, in some cases, I could, you could even argue that maybe chronic pain was averted because of the utilization of ketamine intraoperatively and perioperatively.